Hi guys, Squill here and welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. In this video, we're going to take a look at a mod. This mod is currently going under the project name of A32NX, but it'll soon get its proper name. Now, the goal of this mod is to be to the Airbus A320neo what the Zebo mod is to the default 737-800NX plane. And if you know what I mean by that, you may be getting excited, but don't get too excited because it's still very much in the early days of the development in this mod. There's a long road ahead, but it does offer some nice improvements to the basic stock aircraft that we get in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now it's community driven, it's open source, and what we'll do in this video is we'll take a look at where to get it, how to install it, and the features currently available. So let's get started. Now, before I go ahead and actually install the mod and show you some of the features, I thought it'd be quite useful to just briefly step into the default Airbus A320neo and take a look at how it operates. And that way, when I show you the differences, you'll appreciate what they've done with the mod. So first of all, going up to the overhead panel, if we turn on the batteries and the fuel pumps, cancel the warning, Straight away, we can notice a few things. So first of all, all of the onboard avionics have turned on and they've all aligned on the IRS system. If you know what that is, it's this system up here called the ADIRS or ADIRS, which is the system that tells the plane where it is. All of these buttons or switches are completely in-op on the default aircraft and the system already knows exactly where it is. Additionally, if we go down to the pages display here, you'll notice that there is no bleed page there is no apu page there is no door page and if we switch mode on this watch the nd it instantly switches between all the different modes that it can go through on the overhead the seatbelt switch is in op as is the no smoking switch and the air conditioning switch is here are also completely in op. Finally, if we hover over any of the buttons down here, anything that doesn't work shows as in op on the ECAM buttons. Also, you'll notice when we start the APU up, which we'll do now, we'll hit the start button, and there is no APU actual page, so we can't monitor what the APU is doing. And if you listen, the APU starts up pretty quickly and on the overhead it will become available within about 30 seconds. And there you go, it's instantly available. It, that took literally about 30 seconds, it's available, I can now put the APU bleed on and I can instantly start the engines. These things, these are the primary things that have been changed in this mod. So let's get it installed and downloaded and then we'll go through how it differs. So let's start off by getting the mod downloaded. The link to this is in the video description. This is the GitHub project page. This is where the code is actually being hosted. And this is where you can download the mod. You notice when you come here, there's some information here about how to install it or where to install it. And then further down, there's such things as a change log and an FAQ. Now, normally what you would do is you would download the release build and the releases are available over here. So if we click on releases, we can see that the latest release is this one, version 0.1.1. And the way you would download it is to click on the source code zip file and download that file. However, I'm going to download the development version of this, which contains a few extra features. Now, if you do go and download development features, development builds of the project, then just bear in mind that some things may be broken or slightly volatile. So to do that, I'm gonna drop down the master list here. I'm gonna click on view all branches. And you know that this is the master, this is the default one. This is where you would get the release versions from. I'm gonna go and download the development version of this. You can do this too if you want to, but like I say, it's at your own risk because it's not an official release, it's a development build. So in order to download this, we just simply click on get code, download zip, that then downloads. We open that up and what we have is this folder here. This may have a different name by the time you get to this. Remember the project will get an official name soon, 
But the, the main thing to do is go inside this folder and this is what we want, the A32NX. Incidentally, if you download the release build, it will look like this. You have the same kind of folder, but inside you'll just have the A32NX folder. It's only the development build which will contain this extra stuff. We don't need this extra stuff so we can ignore it. But this is the folder we're after, A32NX. And what we want to do is we want to find our community folder. We went through this in one of the previous videos, but if you're struggling, just have a quick look at the main release here. Scroll down and it'll say to you, if you've got the Microsoft Store Edition or the Steam Edition or the Box Edition, have a look in here. If you've got it in a custom folder like I have, then you need to go and find your custom folder, but you need to find the community folder. This is where you'll put, for example, the liveries that I have. And what you do is you just take this A32 and X and you just drag it into the community folder. And that is it. That's all that you need to do in order to start um, install the mod. So now you just need to restart your Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I've installed the mod. I've restarted Microsoft Flight Simulator and outwardly there's no difference. I've still got the liveries which I've got from a different mod and they all work fine with the A320. But when we jump into the cockpit, and we put the batteries on, this is when we start to see some of the differences. So we'll turn the batteries on, put the fuel pumps on. This is exactly as I did before. And straight away, you'll notice that the main avionics have not come on. Also, if you look on the overhead, you'll notice that the ADIR system is not aligned. The switches are actually operable, which they weren't before, but because there's no avionics turned on, we can't actually see what's going on yet. So let's bring on the external power. And you'll notice it goes through the self-test mode, which is what it should do. When these things fire up, you should notice that because the ADIR system is not aligned, there's no IRS, it has no idea where it is, no idea what the pitch is, what the heading is, it knows nothing. So this is basically what should happen if you have a failure in that system. So that's completely different. So what we need to do is we need to turn those on. We need to put them into nav mode. I think you're supposed to go one, two, and then three. There's three systems on board the Airbus. Uh, the reason for that is the number one system is used by uh, the pilot in command. The number two is used by the first officer. And then number three is a backup system. I don't think all of that's modeled fully yet, but as you can see, as the IRS system is aligning, it starts to figure out where it is. Incidentally, there are switches here, which are not operable yet, but if they were and the IRS system was working completely, you would be able to, for example, turn off the first officers, which is number two, and then he would then switch in to here and use the third one, the backup system. But that's not model yet. However, we'll just give that a bit of time and that will align itself up. While it's doing that, notice in the ECAM memo, it says IRS is in alignment. So that's a new thing. Also notice underneath, there is a door page. Oh yes, we have more pages down here. So what we'll do is, because now we've got system, we can request from the ground services that they bring in the jetway connection. And you'll see that the, the door gets automatically opened and if we could quickly jump to the outside you can see the jetway is coming in and also notice now the irs is aligned that's gone from here and the nd is now displaying the nav page so it knows where it is basically this door will open like that we're going to a caution and the cabin door is indeed open so great we've got a door page that actually works for catering so the catering door opens and also the baggage service. And when they have completed, the doors close and the door page correctly displays that those doors have been closed, which is cool. So that's a door page. What else have we got? Well, we actually have an APU page, which we'll go through in a second. We have a flight control page, but this is only a placeholder. This is not actually active yet, but hopefully soon it will be because this is a really useful page to have. Having said that, the APU page is actually a really useful page to have. You can actually see what the APU is doing, and we'll go through that in a second. Now, up on the overhead, there's uh, some increased functionality. For example, the air conditioning system, we can actually alter these dials. I don't think it particularly does anything. I don't think there's a temperature display currently, but you know you can change it, that's for sure. 
You've also got the uh, seatbelt sign, which doesn't chime just yet, but will do soon. And you've also got the no smoking sign here, which is now operable. If we jump back down to uh, the pages display, there we go, pages display. We've also got a placeholder for the con uh, the conditioning system and the wheel. So we can't see any of the, any information here. We've also got a placeholder for the bleed system, which is mostly not operable. It kind of, like the APU will open when we put the APU bleed on, but most of the rest of it doesn't actually work yet. Also, when we flick between the different modes, you'll notice that it, instead of just flicking instantly, it now says mode change as it does in the real Airbus. So let's get the APU fired up and see how it differs and then we'll start the main engines. All right, so let's go up to the overhead and we will, oh, before I do that, just quickly have a look what page this is on. This is on the bleed page. I go up to the APU and I'll click on the master start switch. And you will notice that it automatically switches to the APU page, which is what it should do. You'll also notice that the flaps are not currently open, so we just need to give the APU a chance to actually set itself up before we can actually start it. So you just wait about 10 to 20 seconds, and that should change here. There we go. Flap is open. Right, so now we can go back to the overhead, and we can hit Start. And we can actually monitor the APU startup. If you go outside, by now with the default aircraft, the APU would almost be fired up. But that's just not the case here. The APU will only actually be available on the overhead once the N% percent reaches its maximum of 100%. If we actually go to the overhead right now, you'll notice that it's still starting. So this is the bit where you have to wait. It's not a quick startup. This is particularly uh, something that will affect you when you come into land and you, you know, turn off the runway, leave the runway, and that's when you'd normally start the APU up. And the reason for that is by the time you get yourself back to the gates, the APU is actually up and running so you can power down your engines. If you get back to the gates and find that you didn't start the APU, you can't turn your engines off until you've fired it up, otherwise you'll lose all electrical power. So this is more of a realistic simulation of how long it takes to get an APU online. So end percentage is almost 100. And you can see EGT is coming back down. You can also see that it's generating 35 PSI of bleed. And once it's on 100%, it's now available to use. So we'll turn on the APU bleed. And you'll notice that that valve has now opened. And we're now running on APU power. So we can go back to the overhead and we can disconnect external power and we're now self-sufficient so what of engine starts and what about the engine page well before we just quickly look at the engine page i want you to look at the fuel page this is obviously the default one i don't think this has been modified by the mod in any way but you'll notice that the apu is drawing fuel out of the left uh, inner tank it's not drawing it from the right inner tank because this valve here is cut off so there's no linkage between the two fuel systems currently also notice that no fuel is being drawn into the main engines and those fuel valves are closed. In fact, if you flick that, you'll see that it opens up and if you flick it back again, you'll see it shuts the valve off. That is in the default, um, the default A320neo. What's not in the default is the engine page. If you go to the engine page, you'll also notice that it tracks the fuel usage as well up here. And I think there's currently a bug in this particular build where the fuel reported burn here is different to the fuel reported burn here. They should be the same. But the reason they're different is because with this mod, they've actually modified the fuel flow and the burn rate of the fuel on the Airbus to be more realistic. So that's cool. So let's start off by starting up the engine. Notice at the moment there's no, um, there's no pressure and there's no bleed going into either of these engines. And if I flick the engine into the start position, you'll notice that it says ignition A and B. Now, I should be pushing back before we start in the engines. There's a whole bunch of things I should be doing, like putting on the beacon light, pushing back. I'm not going to do that. We shouldn't be doing this in the gate, but I just want to show you the mod right now. So what we'll do is we'll start engine two. And you'll notice the pressure, the bleed from the APU is now being shoved into engine two. And what we should start to see now is on the upper page is N2 rotation. There it is. And one will start to pick up. EGT will rise. And you'll notice that the oil pressure will start to come up. 
and the engine temperature will also rise down here. So let's sit back and just watch this do its thing. Notice as well, the fuel flow has started to begin up here. One kilogram of fuel used on the right engine. I think currently, by the way, this is bugged, but I don't know. Actually, maybe it's not. It might be in up, though. I don't know. Okay, there goes the PTU. You can hear the hydraulic system pressurizing, and we have engine 2 start. Let's go for engine 1 start, and what I want you to notice is on the fuel page, it says that it's burned 3 kilograms of fuel on the right engine, whereas on here it says it's burned 4. I fed that back to dev. They're going to fix it, so don't worry about that. Hopefully that will get patched real soon. But same thing's going to happen. It's going to now start engine 1. I haven't actually tested the fuel flow on this yet, so I've not taken it for a spin to see how well uh, the fuel burn has been corrected on the Airbus. So you have to have a go with that yourselves. Um, but the developers told me that they've made it, you know, like the real Air 320neo. There we go. It's almost up. And one is where it should be for idle. Fuel is being consumed in both. And it's all being tracked. So now, if we go to the APU page, since we're now running on full main engine power, we can basically turn off the APU. And if we go back down here, you can see that the N is coming down. Again, the APU is now taking time to close down, but we can see it doing it. And eventually when it gets down to nothing, you see the bleed valve has been shut off. When it gets down to nothing, you'll see the screen go back to its starting position when the APU is off. And you can see the flap is now closed and the APU is now fully shut down. That's like about two minutes for it to complete. Now, in the near future, the devs want to improve and, speci and specialize the onboard autopilot systems. They actually want to change the way that the A320 works. They want to implement TCAS, improve the electrical, hydraulic systems. They want to add missing features to the MCDU. It's far from a fully featured mod, but it does add a little bit more functionality and realism to the Airbus as it stands. How do you get notified of updates to the mod? Well, currently, you have to check that GitHub page or you can join the Discord server. In future updates, what they're gonna do is put the um, updates into the Ecamm as a memo. So the actual Ecamm screen will alert you if there's been an update to the mod, but that's uh, something that in the future. One final thing, uninstallation is very simple. Just shut down Microsoft Flight Simulator, delete that folder uh, in the community folder, restart, and that's it, you're done. That's it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed that one. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. Take care and happy flying.